The Cube. Covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to the Boston Waterfront, everybody. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's special presentation of the HP Big Data Conference, hashtag Seize the Data. Keenan Rice is here, he's the Vice President of Alliances and Channels at Looker. Keenan, good to see you, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. So, we're talking about Vertica, the momentum in the marketplace. Um, you know, you see a lot of stuff happening in big data, not all of it's good, but seems like Vertica is pretty solid. Growth continues, mm -hmm. a lot of customer mm -hmm. momentum. What's your take? Uh, yeah, I really couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, you know Vertica's really solidly positioned themselves uh, in the market as you know kind of the best big data software that can be deployed anywhere, right? It can be deployed on-prem, hyper-converged, hybrid, cloud, whatever, right? And so we're seeing that across our customer base at Looker as well. Petabyte scale workloads going you know anywhere they want to deploy with all that kind of best in breed analytics stuff. So Vertica, a big emphasis on on cloud. Mm -hmm. You guys are you know kind of born in the cloud, yep. really is kind of your, your ethos. Um, what's happening there? You know, a lot of people were saying, no, oh, everything's going to be on-prem, and, and then all of a sudden, wow, the customer conversations have changed, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, I think with any new change, it's, you know, you got to get over your fears, right? So whether they're regulatory fears, whether they're just general control fears, right? And uh, we've really seen that shift tremendously from every, every industry in our customer base, from healthcare you know, to retail, to obviously born in the web companies, staying in the cloud. Um, and you know, they're going there, and they're going to continue to go there at probably a faster rate than they did in the past, too. So this is a big show for you guys. You guys are a you know, major sponsor. You won the hackathon last Two year. years running, yes. actually. <laughs> oh, that's right, two years in a row. So give us the update on Looker. Uh, yeah, you know, we've continued to just, you know, keep growing really, really fast. Uh, last year, about this time, we were about, you know, just over 100 employees, about 250 customers, uh, just starting to, you know, go international. Now we're about 250 employees, over 700 customers. Uh, big office now in London, probably looking to expand into APAC. Uh, did a good $40 million round of funding with Kleiner back in February. Uh, so yeah, we're, uh, you know, pedal to the metal here. Yes, yeah, so you've raised almost what a, a close to 100 million now, yeah. right? Yeah, so 98. Yeah, so that helps you with the international expansion. Your software, yeah. you, know, you think of this capital efficient business, but to compete, you got to go channels, you got to go global, yep. you got marketing expense against the big guys. So yeah, you know. yeah. So I mean, obviously, you know, raising that money, you know, definitely helps us put fuel on the fire, and then that SaaS business model really helps us, you know, perpetuate and make that money go a lot further. Right. Got a lot of players in this market. You got Tableau, you got yeah. Burst, you got you guys. Uh, why do customers bring in you against those others? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, if I would look back four years ago and say, do I want to enter a space as a startup in a completely hyper-competitive <laughs> space, I probably wouldn't choose this. Get into the here. BI <laughs> business, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably not going back to the BI business, right? But. Uh, I think we fundamentally had the right time, right place with the right idea, right? Which was companies like Vertica, the cloud, all these things, you know, the big data trend, the idea of storing as much data as possible, getting it all together and figuring out to, what to do with it later. Uh, that opportunity is what we kind of wrote on, right? So we built the company from the ground up to be you know, cloud native, 100% in database, leverage the growth and innovation that's happening in the data storage layer, and be that thing on top of it to make the organization be able to describe their data, have a single source of the truth, and then let everybody else find it, access it, do their own data discovery, you know, embed it into portals, you know, integrate it, do whatever they would like to do with the data. Uh, so the in database architecture, the born of the web thing really, really kind of helped us solidify against the, the other players in the market. And the gap between, you know, sort of Excel and Oracle or SaaS is just so enormous. Is it fair to say you guys are with Vertica, tucking in there, really you know, solving a lot of problems that can't be solved with Excel and too expensive to solve with those other solutions and too cumbersome? It's exactly right. I mean, I think uh, the Vertica Looker solution is that next gen business intelligence platform, right? You know, the first wave might have been the, the, the Teradata MicroStrategy, right? And I think the next wave, you know, really looks like the Vertica Looker world, right? Petabyte scale, transform data at query time, let everybody analyze it and do whatever they want to do with the data. 
We see the, uh, the, the Watson platforms are changing people's uh, thoughts about the role of machine learning in doing these kinds of analytics. Are yeah. you are you seeing uh, you know other platforms emerge that uh, as, as machine learning libraries are now are now open source from from several of the major players? Is that becoming a major factor in how you do continue to develop your product? Uh, you know, I mean, I think the continuous yeah, I think the continuous trend in the, in the kind of operationalization of machine learning and things like this is actually only showcasing how much more powerful our architecture is in this new world. So we have a tight relationship with IBM and, and we do some really interesting stuff with Watson you know, with machine learning and that kind of thing. And it, it's really cool because data is not just the relational business data now, right? It's, it's the sentiment analysis, it's the sensor data. It's all these things that when you start applying machine learning algorithms, you enrich that data, you write that back down in the database. Now you can actually, you know, give tremendously more rich context analytics for a normal business user. Right? Talk about your business a little bit because you're on a growth trajectory. You're seeing a lot of companies in the general big data space struggling a little bit. Saw mm -hmm. Platforma, you know, get taken up by Workday, and that was sort of a had to happen move. You guys are have a different story, different narrative. Yep. Tell it. Yeah, uh, you know, we're heads down, kind of trying to build the best, you know, next gen business intelligence platform. You know, whether we're going to do that as an individual company, you know, for the foreseeable future, whether we're going to do that as a as a department, um, you know, we're really just trying to build that next gen BI tool and. and really help our customers succeed with data. Uh, and and it, it's really telling, I think, in the customer acquisition, for sure, right? Um, well over you know, 100 plus customers quarter over quarter, coming to the Looker platform, usage across each customer base, something I think is like 60% of the employees in the organizations usually get access to Looker. They start using Looker on a daily basis. It's, it's almost as prevalent as email in a lot of these organizations, right? You have email on one screen, you have Looker on the other screen. Um, so I think the fundamental usage, the change of philosophy in the organization around really becoming data driven is driving our growth, right? And we're just going to continue to help our customers be successful at that and become more data driven in that sense. Well, and we're really kind of six years into the bromide of becoming data driven and now mm -hmm. it's the better part of a decade. So it's, mm -hmm. it's actually happening. It's, it's realizing and for sure what Visualization's a big part of that. You know, <laughs> being able to interact with your existing database. Uh, SQL yep. is something you guys bet on yep. early. Right? SQL, yeah, uh, retro hip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. It used to be kind of boring at parties, but now it's, you know, it's all the rage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was kind of, it was, it was very interesting. I think timing was definitely fortuitous to us, but our founders, uh, you know, they fundamentally believed wherever the big data world was going to go, SQL is always going to be the lingua franca for analytics, right? And, and we really saw a minor shift to see if you could do it without SQL. Uh, and then it realized, you know, it all came back to SQL is the lingua franca for analytics. Are you seeing new industries emerge or in, uh, interest uh, growing in any particular industries faster than others now? Man, uh, data, uh, it's been shocking. I mean, obviously we had a big, big initial growth with born of the web companies, right? With Ubers and you know, Etsy's and, and all these companies that are really born data driven, born of the web and, and all of this. But, you know, we've started to see it from financial services, healthcare, uh, uh, nonprofits, banking, et cetera. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's across everything. Kenny, you talked about essentially getting a foothold in an organization and then you know, the number of, u the usage explodes. What are the roles that you're seeing in terms of adoption for your solutions? Yeah, so we, we target going into the organization with the BI team, right? in the IT organization. So also retro hip for the world of SaaS, yeah. right? They always try to disintermediate. We're like, no, let's make you more powerful. Let's give you the platform to then let everyone else succeed on top of this, right? So very service now like it works. Very, right? very much, very much, very much. And it works extremely well, right? Because those are the folks that have the technical aptitude to really empower the organization. As long as you give them the platform to then empower everyone and not make them the gatekeepers of the information. So that's kind of that's been that's been a philosophy of ours for the for the development of the product. 
Um, and then we see it across all departments. Uh, marketing is usually a huge user of data, right? They're doing really sophisticated analysis like customer journey stuff, sentiment, you know, digital marketing, campaign attribution, all this kind of really cool stuff. We see finance, you know, really diving deeper into the numbers than they may, may have in the past, which is looking at reports or spreadsheets. You know, they're really getting into the details at petabyte scale data, which is, which is a pretty cool change that I've, I've seen shift. Um, supply chain. Uh, you know, inventory management, even IT teams actually using it to manage infrastructure and, and monitoring and this kind of thing. So, I mean, it's really going across every department. Let's talk a little bit more about competition. You've, you seem to find a good swim lane relative to some of the cool upstarts. Yep. Um, I guess Oracle, you don't kind of, you, you worry about because they're so big, but it's Oracle, right? Yep. They got their red stack, okay. Yep. Microsoft's doing some interesting things. You know, yep. you got Power BI coming in and you got this new, new cloud ethos. Yep. What do you what do you make of of Microsoft as a, a competitor? Yeah, no, they've been extremely successful with the revamp of Power BI. Um, you know, Power BI is definitely riding on this, the success of Azure as well, yeah. right? Uh, so you know, we're top tier partners with Azure. We see tremendously you know large and innovative workloads going to Azure as well. So that platform is is really matured quite nicely. Um, with Power BI, I mean, I think. You know, they've really focused on the self-service visualization aspect, right? So mm. them, Tableau, AWS, QuickSight, you know, Click, et cetera, you know, they're all really competing and they've started to really define out that, that self-service, you know, individual or small team workload, right? Um, we've continued to kind of stay in the, if you want to take a little bit of a larger investment, you want to, you know, actually do this organizationally, you want to, you want to deploy it to everybody, you want to kind of take that traditional BI approach and really modernize it with your next gen data infrastructure stack and still give everybody self-service, but do it on this, this larger platform. That's kind of the swim lane we've, we've really established. That's a transformative us. sell in, yes. in many, many regards. So what's that narrative like? Uh, who are you typically selling to in the IT organization and how are you making that transformative business case? Yeah, so it's, it's selling into the, the BI and the analytics teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's really the whole idea of empowerment. It's don't, you know, your business users are hungry for information. Your, your previous tools are becoming the gatekeeper. You know, we call this a lot of times the data bread line. You know, you're <laughs> making your business users stand in line and beg for information. So get out of the way, allow everybody to have access to free market goods. <laughs> Right, and that's the organization's data. Right, okay, let's go ahead, sorry. Please. You're taking on a big training uh, task there, though, as well, and, and BI organizations have traditionally done a lot of the work themselves for users. You're talking about democratizing this. Mm -hmm. What kind of a task are, are your customers taking on when they seek to democratize information like this? Yeah, um, you know, it's going to look like a spectrum. Right, uh, you know, we, we, have a, we have a very large and growing younger workforce that is very data savvy, kind of from the beginning, right? Data and computers and, and things like that are, are part of their DNA, right? Uh, and then we have you know, other parts of the workforce that might not be as data savvy and pick it up really, really quickly, right? So we have a, you know, a really interesting curriculum and our customers adapt to it really easily where you know, the entry point might be a dashboard and they might only click on this link in their internet every single day, go to the dashboard, click on a few data points, drill into some details, maybe change some filters, and that might be it. But that's the access of information that they need from the BI team, right? And then others might need you know, to build their own dashboards, to go build their own reports, to do more ad hoc discovery. And so then they easily can just click through and go into it, or we set up what, what, we, like, what our BI uh, teams call explorer sessions, and they help them learn the functionality and the kind of how do you ask questions of data, the curiosity-driven kind of approach. It's a really kind of uh, easy curriculum we help with them. And then you, know, you get analysts and business users and stuff that start going really crazy and you know, integrating it to R or you know, integrating it into other business applications and, and really starting to do advanced workflows with the UI. So this is starting to come into focus, for me anyway, uh, is you know, Microsoft cheap and cheerful, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Tableau's ascendancy. You said it, not me. <laughs> but, ta yeah, ta but Tableau's ascendancy was built upon denigrating your peeps, yes. the BI teams, basically yep. saying slow and cumbersome and you don't want to hang out with these. You're going and empowering that BI team saying transform, very service now like, yeah. and which is extremely powerful because they're in a, in a position to permeate the organization, support it. You make, if you make them heroes, you know, 
good things can happen. So exactly. I didn't understand that before about yeah, Looker. No, that's, I mean, yeah, the BI team, you know, those are our peeps for sure. I mean, th that's who we are at Looker, right? And, and uh, we want to make sure that they're successful. So you got advocates that are you know, selling internally to the extent that you can make them successful. Yeah, I mean, Come on, data's hard. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> These right. guys are not just dead weight. I mean, they're right. extremely, extremely smart, right? right? So how do you leverage them across the organization? Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, they're, and they're, they're, they're dying for new challenges that aren't just fixing the enterprise data warehouse. Or they don't like to build reports. Right. <laughs> your analytics in the cloud, you have to get the data in the cloud first. What progress are you seeing right now on customers actually moving large amounts of data to the cloud? Uh, much more progress than I would have actually expected so quickly. Um, you know, we still see, you know, we see a lot of the born, born of the web companies, right, that have the petabyte scale that just kind of was born in the cloud, right? So that, that was quite easy for them, right? And then we start seeing a lot larger of the Fortune 500 companies moving to the cloud at, at a faster rate, right? Um, you know, they're still looking at multi, you know, multi-workloads on-prem and cloud or some sort of hybrid in between. Um, but they're getting terabytes and terabytes and even you know, petabytes up there pretty quickly. Um, and they're ascribing to the new philosophy, which is you know, your next-gen infrastructure is store everything, get it up there, and let's figure out what to do with it later. But don't get too cumbersome and burden yourself with doing multi-year structured data kind of approach like you would have done in the past. Like Not just shifting your data, but also shifting your data philosophy. Excellent. Eamon O'Neill uh, said this morning that if, if people don't, um, uh, don't remember the exact quote, but copying data is a bad thing. Yeah, friends uh, don't let friends, friends copy friends data. Friends let their friends copy <laughs> data. Are you seeing, uh, is that part uh, of your philosophy, is sure. to work with the production data? For sure. Um, yeah, it could be, you know, it could right, be a simple right. replication of the production. Well, obviously never connect to the production yeah. database, right? Unless you're doing some, you know, mixed workload kind of data database itself. But yeah, copy the data over augment it, you know, write data to it that uh, uh, comes from you know, any sources, business applications, sensors, Internet of Things, production databases, whatever. Just get it all together there and leave it there, right? Let us leverage the power of the database by doing that transformation at query time rather than transforming it, copying it, transforming it, copying it, transforming it. And then all of a sudden, now you have data lineage problems, you have this data heritage, and you have all these problems that are manufactured, right? <laughs> they shouldn't actually exist. It tells so. a lot of storage. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it tells a lot of vertigo, it tells a lot of storage, but um, you know, those things are becoming cost effective. We see that that is a cost effective and a business effective approach at petabyte scale, so there, you know, there, there isn't quite a, you know, an argument to do the latter half these days. So what, what should we look for from Looker you know, going forward? What's on the horizon? Uh, so we have a big event that we're doing in October. So it's going to be our first uh, really? our first conference, our first user event. Uh, so hopefully we'll have you guys there. Where is that? Uh, is it's it going to be in New York, October uh, 17th and 18th or 18th and 19th. Thank that's, you. That's huge. Yeah, so hitting the critical mass, so that's really exciting. Uh, we have some really exciting uh, initiatives that we're going to announce there. Um, the next gen of Looker is going to be announced there. Um, I can give you a little bit of a sneak peek. Uh, it's the idea of Looker being a data platform rather than just being a BI tool, right? So the idea of, of, of being a data platform is this is the central place for people to manage their data, to govern their data, to describe their data, and then allow the data to go into context for the end users. So whether that's our BI application, uh, it could be our data apps initiative that we launched back in, in April, where it's pre-created templates of analytics. So whether that's you know, customer journey analysis or sales analytics or customer success management tools. That's the data apps program, so that could be one thing. Could be our Powered by Looker initiative, so building custom applications or embedding into you know, third-party applications. Um, or it could even be our data in context, what we call data everywhere, which is uh, like using our Slack bot. So you might live in Slack and communicate a lot, and so you can actually be leveraging Looker in real time, asking questions of the data, getting that in context embedding Looker into Salesforce and actually looking at it, you know, pipeline analysis and, and other sorts of trends in real time in context of that, you know, of that account, of that opportunity, et cetera. So this data platform thing is what we think is, is pretty revolutionary to, to allow those BI teams to build data experiences for their customers. And that's the 18th, 17th, 18th, 19th in New York City. Where in New York City? Uh, it's going to be at the uh, Mercantile Exchange. Oh, uh, fantastic. Yeah. Right, right, uh, right over by in the In fact, Javits. we're going to have an event there in a, 
and, and right around the same time, actually. All right, we'll, so we'll warm it up It's close you. to the Javits, right <laughs> across the street from Pillars 37, where we have our big event every year, so it's a great location. You're going right. to love it. Fantastic. Well, we're right. looking forward to seeing you guys. Good there. deal. All right, Keenan, thanks very much for coming right, to theCUBE. Really a pleasure, pleasure seeing you. Thanks. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Paul and I will be back with our next guest right after this short break. Thank you.